What up, internet? Welcome to Bricks and Beer, episode one. Uh, welcome back. For those of you who have seen episode zero, if you have not, uh, go watch that. There's a link somewhere down there. Um, if you have watched that, then you kind of know what this is about, and that's awesome. So thank you for watching. A uh, couple of just follow-ups from the first one. Uh, number one, I should kind of point this out. You're watching this on YouTube, and why are you watching this on YouTube? Um, you're watching this on YouTube because Flickr fucking sucks. Uh, Yahoo, just fucking disaster. Um, they only allow me to post three minutes of video footage, and since this is unedited and uncut, there's no fucking way I can do this in three minutes. Um, fucking A, we're at a minute. We'd be a third of the way there, and I haven't said anything of merit yet. Um, but YouTube, YouTube is way cool. Uh, it's actually, like, shockingly easy to use. Um, I, the, the YouTube Lego scene, if there is one, is, I don't think it's really geared for me, per se. I wanted to have this all self-contained in the Flickrverse, um, but that's just not gonna happen. So, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go check out the Flickr, there'll be a link there, uh, and this will point to Flickr, and Flickr will point back to here, so... Fuck it, it's in two places, it, it'll be kind of two different things. Um, if you leave me a comment, though, in either place, that's awesome, I appreciate it. I don't really care where you leave the comment, I'll check both, I'll read them. Um, other follow-up things, so guests, people, other people besides me, so that way you don't have to just listen to me. Uh, that is gonna happen, but it's a little tricky, because I have to do it in person. Um, some people have suggested that I like go to Skype or Google Hangouts or something like that. Uh, there's a couple of issues with that. Um, I do like a regular Google Hangout thing with some friends of mine, and it and there's some connectivity issues. And I listen to a bunch of podcasts, and they have guests, so it's like five dudes on a Skype call, and every motherfucking time, something happens with the connectivity, like. Somebody's telling a story, and it's always like when somebody's like hyping up the best part of the story, and they're like, and then I was, ah, 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 and then fucking the other four people are like, yo, Danny, Danny, you're, you're lagging, you're cutting out, Danny, what'd you say, nobody knows what fucking Danny was talking about, yeah, uh, Danny's not a real person, well, I'm, Danny's a real person, but not, it's, it's a name, I'm just using a name, um, so yeah, guess. Uh, I have some plans to have some people on, and uh, maybe I will take the laptop and take it some places, and we'll fucking hang out, and uh, we'll drink some beers, and we'll fuck around with the bricks, we'll talk about some buildings, and some models and shit with other people, but for this one, it's just me. That's all you get. Just me. Um, so if you made it this far, awesome. Stick with me. There'll be some cool shit I'll show you guys. Uh... Second thing, well, third thing, whatever, the next thing, um, why beer? So, it's a good question. You should ask yourself that right now. Um, I'll tell you why beer. So, my, my wife kind of gave me some shit when I told her I was doing this, and she was like, are you just drinking on the internet to make yourself seem cooler? And I was like, well, yeah, but that's not, that's not really the reason I'm doing it. Um, I really want this to be like a casual, communal kind of thing, like... I actually do this over fucking Google Hangouts with some people, and it's cool, because I like people who are into Lego and drink a beer, and they kind of go hand in hand, and uh, I'll kind of get to that. I'll talk to you about why it's a good thing. Um, but let's talk about beer, just in general. So the idea is I'm going to drink some beers. Uh, hopefully you guys are drinking beer when you're watching this. That would be amazing. Uh, if you are, tell me what kind of beer you're drinking. Um, I'll tell you about what kind of beer I'm drinking. So this is... Great White, it is from, uh, I think it's Eureka, it's somewhere way the fuck up north. Uh, yeah, Eureka. Um, this is made by Lost Coast. They make a bunch of awesome, awesome beers. Uh, the Downtown Brown is great. There's a Alley Cat one. They all have these, like, cool sort of cartoony characters on them. Uh, this one's obviously a shark, and I like sharks, so fuck yeah. Um, I really like this beer, and I kind of have a story about this beer, so I'll tell you about this beer. Um, so I started drinking beer in college, as, you know, you do. Um, and, you know, early college, you, you tend to drink the, your, your favorite kind of beer is one kind, and that's called the free kind. Because um, you probably don't have quite the access to beer, your finances aren't really, you know, in a way to 
you know, become a, a connoisseur, if you will. Um, so I drink a lot of shitty beer, starting out, as you do. Um, and that's not to say, like, shitty beer is all shitty. Like, I think there's a time and a place for uh, many beers. It's just, you know, what do you want to drink? So when I'm, I'm started drinking better beer towards the end of college, uh, two reasons. One, you know, I was of legal age, so it was much easier. My access to alcohol got a little bit better. Um, and two, uh, I had a little bit more money. Um, I, I was working a lot in college. I, I owned a screen printing business, which was really shitty. Um, it, not shitty, it was fun, but it was a shit ton of work, and it, it was not a, a monetary thing. Like, I made no money. Uh, but it was fun, because I got to print t-shirts with my friends, my roommates, and it was, it was like another crazy collaborative project art thing. Um, and then on top of that, I worked two, like, regular jobs. I worked one for the school, I did telefundraising, which is, like, telesales, harassing alumni for money. Um, it was fun. I mean, I was, I was okay at it, I guess. Uh, and then the other thing is I worked in a beat store, and this beat store was fucking the weirdest place ever. Um, I went to school in San Luis Obispo, which is like central California. Uh, and that it's a very, very small town. And in this town, there's a very small bead store. And, uh, I worked there cause they sold dinosaur eggs and fossils and rocks and dinosaur eggs were fucking rad. Um, and, and so I just, I, I like immediately became the senior employee within six months cause the owners are, uh, they're characters. They're like twin 65, 70 year old Brazilians who speak very little English. Um, and so they were, they were funny ladies. Uh, but that's not the important part of the story. The important part of the, I'm just, I'm setting context. If you, if you bear with me, this will all pan out and you'll, you'll understand this beer a little bit better. Maybe. Um, so anyway, I'm working these two jobs and in the summertime, I only have to work the two jobs and like run the screen printing business, but I don't have to go to school. So you got more time, so you work more. Um, so I'm working at the, the school, you know, like three days a week and then the fucking bead store like five days a week. And, uh, slow in the summer, slow is San Luis Obispo, for those of you not in the know. If you don't know where it is or what the acronym is from, that I don't blame you. I didn't know that the town existed until like, I was like, oh, that's a college on a list. Um, so anyway, it's this really weird small town. There's like, there's no drive throughs That's a city ordinance that they're, they're like keeping the spirit um, of a small community with fucking thousands and thousands of 18-year-olds running around out of control. Um, so yeah, so, context. Uh, so I go to work all the time. I open and close this bead store because I'm the senior employee and I'm a manager and responsible. Um, so I work my like eight hour shifts all the time and I didn't have a car because I didn't need a car because it was a small town. Um, and I lived probably like a mile and a half, mile and a quarter, uh, from downtown to my house. I could take a bus, but I never fucked around with the bus cause it was, it actually was free for students, but, um, it never like got me to where I wanted to go at the right time. So I would just walk most of the time. You know, it's a nice little half-hour walk or whatever. Uh, so I would walk home at, you know, 6 o'clock, summer evening, gorgeous, golden hours, sunsets happening. Uh, and I would stop at this liquor store. And if you go to San Luis Obispo, you should go to this liquor store. It's, uh, it's actually a deli as well. Um, you should get a sandwich and get some beer there. It's called Lincoln Deli. Uh, I'm not going to put a link there. You guys can use Google. I don't know if they have a website. They're a fucking liquor store. Um, so anyway, I would go to this deli, and like, as a treat for the end of the day, I would buy myself a beer, and they sell this beer in the slightly larger versions. Um, so I would buy, you know, myself a beer, and I'd drink my beer on the way home, because the liquor store was much closer to my house than the work. I'm, I'm not walking a mile and a half drinking a beer. Uh, allegedly drinking a beer, I should point that out right now. Um, this could all be fiction, you don't know. Uh, so anyway, yeah, Lincoln Deli, um, just rad. So I have all these, like, good memories of fucking college summers, like, drinking beer, coming home, and hanging out with roommates, and, like, it, it was a weird time in my life, um, but it was a fun time. So, there you go. That's why beer. Because, fucking A, beer's rad. Um, so yeah, so going back to the Lego thing, I guess actually well, I should I should address one thing off the bat, like the frequency. How often am I going to do these things? Um, I haven't really decided to like commit to a hard schedule. Like I'm going to fucking put one of these out every X 
time units. Um, I don't really want to like set expectations right up front and then totally fail. Uh, so I'll put these out for as long as it remains fun, um, as long as I have time. A um, couple other things. Oh, the mirroring thing. So if you've gotten this far, you've clearly noticed that the mirroring is hopefully fixed. Hopefully that does not say old pull. Uh, hopefully it says duplo. Um, if it does say old pull, I fucked up because Tommy, the brick nerd, taught me how to mirror the video correctly, so hopefully this is better than last time. Um, and you can hopefully read my shirt, because if you can't read my fucking shirt, and this is all fucked up mirroring-wise, it's it just proves I'm an idiot. Um, but I do love the shirt. Uh, I'll actually link to where you can buy the shirt below. Um, I, I get a lot of comments on the shirt when I wear it out in public, outside of the big dumb wall of Lego behind me, and nobody gets it, or... Well, it's not, it's not nobody. It's like 50-50. Like, half the people just are like, I don't understand your shirt. What does that mean? And then the other half of the people are like, yeah, fucking rock on. And I'm like, cool. Like, you get it. Um, it's fun to wear to breweries because it's like, it's a good conversation starter. Um, so, yeah. So, we'll see how often I do this. Um, there's definitely plans for more episodes. Uh, like I said, guests, all that good shit. That'll come. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about some Lego. Because hopefully that's why you guys are here, because Lego's much cooler. Uh, I wanted to follow up from last time. I did mention that I got uh, some Ultra Agent shit, and I uh, didn't, didn't want to leave it in the dust. Didn't want to give it the appropriate love. Um, so I made something out of those app bricks with their squishy, squishy, weird texture. Uh, so it's not much of a build. It's a little boombox. See? It's, 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 it's. It, uh... The, back in the day, you, you actually had cassettes, and you could, like, put these in there. It was a big deal. Like, my first fucking boombox was a big deal. And I, I made sure to include the antenna, because that was, like, the critical part, because you couldn't listen to the fucking radio, if the antenna was fucked up. Um, so, yeah, Ultra Agents. Uh, the only set from the new line I got is uh, the double punchy drill tank. The tank's already sorted, but I uh, did want to mention fucking Drill Dude here. He's pretty rad. Um... The armor is the same old armor, the helmet's the same old helmet as before, but there are these new, sweet, sexy fist piece, and I threw it. Um, so yeah, oh god, this is not going well. Alright, so back to the, the drill piece. I guess I'll put the fucking drill in there. There's a open stud there, if you guys can't tell. See? Woo! Um, and then they take the fist peg. But these are actually really cool, and uh, the little stupid app thing they give you, uh, which I should probably not so harshly criticized. Uh, it has one in bright light orange, which was an unexpected bonus for me, because I thought you just got the two gunmetal ones. Um, so yeah, Ultra Agents. Uh, it's cool. I like I like where Lego's going. I wish um, the good guys were a little cooler, because like, all the bad guys are fucking rad. Um, all of the Agents lines always have been. Like, Doctor Inferno and that whole like first wave, like, fucking great. Great characters. Like, the bad guys are awesome. The good guys are so boring. They're so bland. It's like, dude in a suit. And now it's like, dude in a suit with a visor. Um, which, I guess, like, cybernetic dude in a suit. Which, uh, you know, whatever. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Because, like, hopefully you guys are like me. And you build original shit with your Lego. And you don't keep all these dumb sets together. And, like, let them get dusty on a shelf. Uh, so hopefully you just buy the set. You take all the parts apart and fucking build your own shit. Um, so yeah, uh, the other thing, following up from last episode, uh, the Renegade. Um, I wanted to pull this off, just so you guys can see it, because I thought it was cool. See, it, it kind of feels nicer to me if it was on the ground, and it's in this orientation than this orientation. Kind of like the original one, um, which I have, but it's over fucking there. Uh, and then the other thing is, um, I teased you guys about this, but I did not show you. Kabam! This is, uh, the front cockpit piece and the engine, the back engine, and they're integrated just like the original set. Um, well, I guess an option. You didn't have to on the original set. So they come apart. Here's the engine. Uh, there's a sort of vague interior in there, so this is actually part of engineering when it all slides in, locks in. Um, and then this is your little, I guess, cockpit fighter action thing. Um, he's pretty cool. He's got like a little 
ramp thing in here so that when he's docked, you can, you know, go in there. And then when he's not docked, uh, he can fly off. Um, yeah, so the, the set, you know, it's cool. Uh, it's got the modular thing. I will probably fucking never, ever display it or do anything, like, with this fast pack kind of deal. Um, but I wanted to replicate the original set functionality to a point. Um, I did not do the big cargo thing coming out of it, just because I felt like it was stupid. It, it just I, I wanted to, like, modernize it and make it cooler. Um, so speaking of the big dumb spaceship, uh, I did want to, again, mention somewhere over here. Oh, come on. Bear with me. Like I said, unedited, uncut. Fuck it, we do it live. Uh, Bricks LA. Um, Bricks LA. There is um, more info. If you can read that, when? If I upload this tonight, not this weekend, but next weekend. Um, it's in Pasadena. You should go. I'll have the big dumb spaceship. Uh, it's a small con. This is the first year they're doing it. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about conventions and like sort of set expectations, if you will. Um, so yeah, conventions. I, I've been to a couple. Uh, maybe you guys have, maybe you haven't, if you're watching this and you haven't, um, go, for sure, because, like, it's a way to prove, it does, it does two things, um, and I'll kind of, like, talk about my first convention, I guess, because that, that might be of interest to you guys, um, I went to BrickCon, it's in Seattle, I had been in the, the local Lego scene here in LA for, like, a year, I guess, um, and I was a little nervous to go, and I went, because I went with, I stayed with people I met strictly off the internet. I did not know any of them in real life. Um, but I went, and it, it did two things for me, and it was kind of like a very transformative moment. One, it, like, proves that you're not alone. And, like, being in a lug and meeting other AFOLs and stuff, that's, that's great. But you go to a convention, and, like, the people that you meet there is what changes everything. It's not necessarily, like, oh, there's, you could buy Lego or... You look at models, like, yes, you get inspired. That's the second big thing. Like, you see, I don't want to say the best of the best, because I don't know if there's necessarily the best of the best, and my convention going is somewhat limited. Um, but you see big, fucking awesome, impressive shit, and then you also see small, impressive shit, and everything in between, and a bunch of different types of stuff. And stuff like, what's really cool for me is, I'm primarily, like, a space sci-fi mecha dude. I do other things, but... Primarily, that's my, my gig. Um, but when you go, you see all these other themes, and you see other builds, and the stuff that, like, you may not be all about. But, uh, you know, it's it's cool. It's like, it, it does kind of open up the doors a little bit, I feel like, to other themes. Um, but the big thing is the people, and that's why you should go. Because um, my first con, I, I stayed with three dudes. I stayed with uh, Dan Rubin and Brom, who were like, seen veterans, like, Brom had been going to conventions for fucking ten years at that point or something, uh, and then Zach, and Zach and I had never been to a convention, so we kind of, like, proverbially popped our con cherry, um, and we stayed with these two dudes, Brom and Dan, and we had a fucking great time, and, like, the first night, it was so awesome, because we got in, and I met Zach in the fucking airport, or the train station, or whatever, and I was like, oh, okay, and Zach was wearing a Guinness hat, and I was like, sweet, you're at least into beer. Like, I don't know if you're a terribly sociopathic, like, psycho that's gonna murder me in my sleep, but at least we're gonna drink some beers. Um, and so Zach and I hit it off, and Brahm's awesome. I'm actually going to Brahm's wedding this coming weekend. So if you're watching this, Brahm, fucking congrats, bro. Uh, yeah, Dr. Brahm's getting married. Um, it'll be cool. I'm looking forward to that. And then, uh, Fucking Dan Rubin. And Dan Rubin's rad, if uh, you're watching this. Either of you guys, fucking cheers. Um, and so we got in, and, like, we set up. And the setup was great, because there was a bunch of crazy big things. Like, I, the biggest things I'd ever seen. And I had been to people's garages. Like, I had seen Bryce build some big bionicle fucking monster thing. But, like, I had never seen huge dioramas or, like fucking multi-foot tall robots, like, it, it was, it was impressive, um, and then, like, straight from there, we fucking just ate, and then Brahm was like, all right, we're going to Keith's room, and we're gonna go kick it there, and I fucking went to Keith Goldman's hotel room, and hung out with, uh, a 
a bunch of dudes, um, like just all these people that I'd seen their work online for years and I actually got to meet them and they were really cool. Um, so it was kind of a big deal for me. So that's BrickCon. BrickCon's in Seattle. It's in October. Uh, if you guys are going, come find me. We'll drink some beers together. Fucking, maybe I'll buy you a beer. Who knows? Uh, go. Go. BrickCon's great. Seattle's amazing. Um, I, I kind of want to tell you about the breakfast place, but I kind of don't, because if you go and you jack my spot there, I'm, it's going to be a big deal. Uh, so the other convention that I've gone to is Bricks by the Bay. And Bricks by the Bay, uh, I think this is the fifth year they'll hold it. I only went the first two years. Um, it's a smaller convention. Uh, BrickCon's definitely big. It's not like Chicago Brick World big, um, which I haven't been to. And to be honest with you guys, like, I've been to Chicago a bunch, so it's not like I want to go to go see Chicago, as cool as Chicago is. And it's the biggest fucking convention ever, and I, I just don't want to deal with the size. Like, I'm over huge crowds like I don't I don't want that like I want a small cool casual hangout like that's why I do this bricks and beer bullshit um so bricks by the bay and it's in uh the bay area the San Francisco bay area and um the first two years it was really small I I didn't go the subsequent years so I don't know what it's like now um but there's a couple of sort of like advantages and disadvantages to a small con versus the big con Right, so the big con. Let's just call BrickCon a big con because it's it's one of the major ones. Um, there's more models. There's more impressive shit. There's probably more activities. Um, but the small con, you kind of get more intimacy. You get to hang out with people more. You get to to sort of. I don't know. You just get more time. You get more time with the Lego. Like you can spend more time kind of like checking out people's shit. Uh, but here's the, here's the problem with Bricks by the Bay for me is, and this is why BrickCon totally works, is the location. Because, like, Bricks by the Bay, so I'll tell you a story. The first time we went to Bricks by the Bay, uh, we went, we showed up, drove all fucking day or whatever, pull in, and we're like, okay, we're going to go find a bar. And the only fucking bar that's close is Dave and Buster's, which is like a adult Chuck E. Cheese, if you will. They, they have them all over, like... Dave & Buster's is cool. I'm not hating on Dave & Buster's. What I'm hating on is that there's no other bars. And this Dave & Buster's wants to charge a fucking cover. And I paid $5 to get in and pay for beer at a Dave & Buster's. Which was so dumb. So dumb. So that kind of like... It, and there's nothing around the convention center that is Bricks by the Bay. It's like based in a hotel and there's like no restaurants. There's no scene. Whereas BrickCon is downtown Seattle. Fucking, it's everywhere. There's like, here's a cool record store. Here's a fucking awesome bar. Here's a great restaurant. So, like, you can cruise with your people and hang out because that's the best part of the convention. It's not so much about, like, showing up, bringing big models, or, like, looking at big models. Like, granted, the builds are part of it. But the thing for me is, like, the hangout, right? So, you got to have, like, a good location. And uh, that's why I'm actually pretty stoked about said Bricks L.A., um, it's in Pasadena, and Pasadena is a really cool town, and it's LA, and there's tons of restaurants and bars and shit, and uh, there's no cover charging Dave and Buster's. Um, so you should go. Uh, it's got a couple of cool things, um, that are kind of unique about it. It's gonna be a smaller convention. This is the first year. I think there's less than 100 people registered, but more than 50. I don't know the exact number, but I know it's somewhere in that ballpark. Um, which is pretty impressive for a first year out, you know, whatever. We'll start small and fucking dominate. Um, it's about fucking time we have a convention here in L.A. Like, it, it's, or just Southern California in general. Um, so I'm pretty impressed. I know the people that run this personally. I'm actually uh, the space commander. I'm, I'm taking a rare moment of community spirit and actually, like, admitting something. Um, so I will be the coordinator, so if the space display looks fucking terrible, this guy's fault. Uh, if it looks great, this guy's fault. Um, so yeah, uh, they're gonna have a couple of unique things. Um, the theming choice is actually pretty cool, so there's all the traditional, like, space, castle, bionicle, you know, Lego theming. Um, but there is some sort of cool pop culture thing. There's a comic bricks display, which I built... A comic book for way back in November that you guys probably cannot see 
No, not at all. It's way the fuck up there. Uh, it's the Akira one. It's on Flickr. Go check it out. Um, I guess I'll throw a link down there just so you guys can see that. Uh, so yeah, Bricks LA. Um, the other thing I'm totally stoked about, and the real reason you guys should go, is uh, not the big dumb spaceship, as cool as that is. Uh, I've got a collaborative project happening behind the scenes that'll be revealed. Um, I'll talk about collabs deep. We'll, we'll roll deep on, on that episode, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save like, the collab talk for that. Uh, but I do want to kind of tease you guys about the the collab that's going on. Um, it'll be space themed, so uh, I don't want to give too much away. But I do, I do want to kind of show off and tease you with a few things, and you know, entice you. Like, come on, come out to LA. Uh, if you can't make it to LA, I'm sure somebody will take photos. I will probably take some shitty ones. Somebody will probably take some really nice ones. Um, so yeah, in this display with other people. So this is just what I've built. So this is in no way reflective of the final product. Uh, there will be some little dudes that look like this. And they eat you with their big teeth. Uh, they kind of look sort of Tremors-esque. Um, if you guys haven't seen Tremors, go, go fucking watch Tremors. They're amazing movies. Uh, yeah, so little printed head piece, which is kind of cool. And a uh, little articulated feet and whatnot, and legs, so they can run around. Um, I have like a squad of them. So these guys will be chillin'. Uh, they kinda look Tremors-esque for a reason. They may or may not be subterranean creatures. And uh, big teeth, yeah, so, rawr. Um, they do have tongues, and they're gray tongues. I kinda wish I had red parts, but I, I kinda like that they're gray, because they look a little bit more alien. Um, Speaking of aliens, I got a couple of other small aliens. Uh, these guys may or may not be not subterranean. Um, this is that bionicle hunt for the the monsters underground with a little bit of decorative add-ons. Uh, we got the green one, the orange one. So, you know, they're hanging out. Uh, they can hang out with their buddy, the red one. Uh, this guy's slightly cooler, as you can see, because he's got the, the marbled tail action going on, so, Arr. little critters, and then, uh, I got one last one that I'll show you dudes, and then, uh, we'll probably get out of here, because this is right around a half hour, which feels okay to me, so this dude, he is kind of froggish, and bites you, just like the other dudes do, uh, he's got some spines, and they're soft and flexible, which is fun. Um, he's got, uh, kind of more articulation, but sort of less articulation. It's kind of the, the Legends Beast scale. Um, so yeah, he's pretty cool. So you got these dudes, and then, uh, you know, you got these dudes, and you got the other dudes. So, if you're interested in seeing these dudes in some sort of crazy collab project, go to Bricks LA. Uh, otherwise, I'll tell you guys more about it next time. Um, so yeah, that's episode motherfucking one. Uh, tell me what you guys think. I got some comments last time, and that was super cool. Um, it's just nice to know people are actually fucking watching this and making it kind of the way through. Um, so yeah, tell me what kind of beers you guys are drinking. What do you want to hear me talk about? Um, if you're at all interested in fucking being on this and you're not... A crazy person, maybe I'll come hang out with you and drink a beer or something. Um, so yeah, Bricks LA, fucking Bricks by the beer, fucking all that shit. Um, bricks and beer, till next time. Peace out.